Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and one of the videos I've been most requested to make with uh, the advent of point one eight is a tutorial on how to rendezvous and dock. So you've seen the spacecraft we have in orbit. We are going to dock with it. Now this rocket we have is a simple design. It's got three large fuel tanks, a Rockamax engine. The upper stage is a smaller uh, fuel tank with the, the Poodle engine. It also includes an RCS uh, tank, RCS system, automatic SAS, and of course a docking adapter. Now, I've deliberately put the target on an inclined orbit, so what we have to do is wait until the Kerbal Space Center is underneath the orbit. Uh, ideally, we want to get close to the other object that is on the orbit, and you can see it coming in on the bottom left there, but we want to get as close to this as possible, and it looks like uh, it's going to overshoot a little, but that's fine. As long as we start out aligned with the orbit, we can adjust uh, our position along the orbit a lot more easily. So this is a standard launch. We're just aiming to get as close to the um, orbital vector as we can. So we're heading off at uh, the course is 45 degrees, and you can take a look out in the map mode and see how the, the orbit is slowly turning over towards the direct, direction we want. What we're going to do is basically come up below this object because it is going to be ahead of us. So we're going to drop our apoapsis or, or we're going to keep our apoapsis to under 100. The target object is in a 100 kilometer orbit inclined by 45 degrees. So one of the nice things about the maneuver node system is you can uh, when you're launching, you can set up a maneuver node at Apple key and uh, from there adjust your your burn to get the exact circular orbit you want. And then, of course, you can take in the scenery by performing the burn in a regular cockpit mode or regular scenic mode instead of watching the map. Uh, it's a good idea, actually, to combine that Apple key maneuver node with an inclination change since it's practically free. Um, I didn't do it in this case because I was so close, but it's very important that you do get your inclination as close as possible to start with. If it is not close enough, it takes a lot of fuel to change. And indeed, if you get it really off, it's actually sometimes better to just restart or to perform a large excursion maneuver. So anyway, now I've got them up, what I want to do is... Uh, set that as my target, actually. Yeah, set that object as my target, and the system will now tell me how close I am. So you can see the ascending node there, and you can mouse over the target positions to get distances to encounters. Now, the orange ones are the first ones that I'm going to meet there on the other side of the, tar the Earth planet. And um, you can see they're like 200 kilometers apart. Uh, if I mouse over them, uh, or... <laughs> If the thing will let me mouse over them, there we go. And on the other side, you can see that I'm the, the other targets. Those are slightly closer together. So you can see that because we are in a lower orbit, we are catching up on this object, on the target object, because we're moving faster. Now, if you launch into an orbit and you are ahead of the target, the opposite is true. You want to be in an orbit slightly above it. Five kilometers is probably good enough for most low Kerbal orbit uh, encounters. Um, now, the one thing you want to do is now trim out your inclination. So find the, the ascending or descending node, whichever one comes first. And then burn, set your maneuver node to go normal or anti-normal until it gets close to the target that you're wanting to hit. Again, you know, you just mess around with this until it's right. And once you've set that up, you aim at the blue target and burn until the bar reaches zero. You can perform more corrections after the fact as well. Um, it'll basically aim to get your vector as the same as the target. So if you're slightly off from your blue orbit, you can adjust that as it gets closer to zero. It's also a good idea to delete maneuver nodes after you after you've used them. Uh, I keep forgetting to do that, so sometimes the map is a little weird. So anyway, now we are in an orbit which is coplanar. We are slightly lower, and we know that we are going to be catching up. So it is time to time accelerate and just be patient as our orbital velocity pulls us 
closer to the target in question. Again, if you were, if the other one was uh, behind you, you would be in a higher orbit, and it would be catching up on you because you would be traveling slower. So what we're going to do is watch uh, during each orbit, the target system will update the intersect estimates until we get relative as we get as close as we like. Now there we go. It says 4.2 kilometers. That means we're practically passing underneath the object at that time. So once you get a really close encounter that you're happy with, uh, you then want to go back to the maneuver node system and find a point in the orbit to burn to bring your orbits close together. This is essentially a very short Hoffman transfer orbit. Um, you want to, you might want to decide that your initial position is not perfect, so don't be afraid to pick up a maneuver node and drop it elsewhere until you get the exact. Uh, thing that you want. In fact, what you can do is drop the maneuver node on the orbit, burn to uh, make your apoaps the the same as the target, and then slide it back and forth until the intersection gets to essentially zero. It makes things very easy. So, of course, once you're there, you use up your maneuver node, and you'll now have 180 degrees worth of orbit to travel around. Again, remove the <laughs> maneuver node and don't accidentally unset the targets. So yeah, we're going to zip around one, uh, 180 degrees, and once we're there, we're going to start to use the artificial horizon instead. Now, when you set up in target mode, the artificial horizon now displays uh, the relative velocity to the target, and it displays two, uh, the two vectors being displayed are your relative motion and your relative position. So once, as we see, we're getting down there, it says closest approach in about 30 seconds. Now we drop back out to external mode. It shows that we're moving at 4.4 meters per second relative to the target. So what I want to do is find the retrograde position and burn at that to null our, the relative velocities. Now, once that's nulled out, we should be sitting roughly stationary about 1.3 kilometers from the target. And at this point, we now want to move in slowly uh, using the main engine. So we're going to continue to use the, the nav ball here. We line up with the pink marker, which, uh, as you see now, points towards the target. We're about uh, 1.2 kilometers out, so I'm going to go about 30 meters per second. Uh, that'll take me less than a minute to close the distance. Now, we don't expect to be perfectly aligned. Um, but all the same, you don't want to hit these things, so you know, turn your spacecraft around and get ready to burn in the retrograde vector. We're just going to cruise in. Uh, you can see 600 meters out, so we've got maybe 20 seconds. Get ready to control this, and we're just going to repeat this pattern until we get close enough. We're going to uh, we're going to basically thrust towards the object. Once we get close enough, we're going to null out our velocity, and then. Uh, decide whether we're close enough, then again, burn towards it, null the velocity, repeat until you're close enough that you want to actually perform a docking. And that shouldn't be too hard. Uh, it maybe takes one or two cycles to get within uh, you know, 30 or so meters. 30 meters or so is typically comparable to the size of the object. And once you get in that close, you want to, you want to switch over to RCS. You don't want to be using the main engine because you need a reverse control. There's nothing worse than having to turn around to uh, fix your, your, <laughs> you fix your velocity. Also, be aware that if you're approaching the target and you get too close, your main engine can kick the target away, which will uh, just make your entire job a whole lot harder. That's why you want to switch to RCS for these close-in maneuvers. In the game, RCS thrusters do not push other objects around, so they're much safer for use in close. Of course, this isn't true in real life, and uh, when the space shuttle was docking at the space station, it had to be careful which groups of reaction thrusters it used, because if they used the wrong ones, they could kick around the solar panels and damage them. And that's very important if you've got a space station that's powered by, well, solar power. I remember during the first mission to service the Hubble Space Telescope that after they'd removed the old solar panels, they used the reaction thrusters on the space shuttle to push these uh, pa the old panels away like giant sails. And there's some great images of them being buffeted around by the gases coming out of the space shuttle. Okay, so now we're close enough. What we do is we want to align both objects to a common point in the sky. Now. Uh, I've switched controls to the other object. 
you can see that we have the prograde and the retrograde vectors, but those actually end up rotating around the planet relative uh, to the sky. So I think that the easiest thing to do is to pick the point 90 degrees in between either the normal or the anti-normal position. This will remain more or less fixed on the sky as the planet rotate, as the, the orbits rotate around the planet. So I'm going to tr put both spacecraft, uh, obviously align them opposite to each other. And yeah, I kind of messed up here and pointed them in the opposite direction, but that's fine. We're really close. We'll uh, fix that. So we are turn on SAS in both objects and now enable the reaction control system. And so I'm going to use the N key to move backwards. Um, also, you note that I misspelled rendezvous. Uh, I guess he's related to Tony. Uh, maybe the rendezvous. That sounds like a girl. That could be uh, Tony's sister, right? <laughs> Tony probe. <laughs> but seriously, uh, we're just going to slide back here and use the translation controls. Now, there is a lot of talk of the new docking mode. I have decided that I'm not using it. The main people that I think will really find a lot of use for the new docking mode, the new docking mode, if you don't know, switches back and forth between translation and rotation using the spacebar. I think the people that really benefit from this are people that use joysticks. Uh, and they, are, they can remap the joystick quickly between one and the other. I, on the other hand, like using the keyboard, and I'm used to where everything is, so I'm going to be a Luddite and not use this shiny new feature. Not that I don't appreciate the work that was done into it. So now we've slid backwards, I've killed my, uh, verdict, my velocity forwards and backwards, and I'm going to kind of transverse across. This is probably the, the most complicated part because you want to you, you really have to shoot the jets to see which way they're thrusting and because you're rotating around the planet you see the horizon rotates in front of you which can make the the translation a little more complicated than it otherwise might be i frequently end up pushing the button to fire an engine and then realizing that i'm going the wrong way and immediately compensating now i've put the camera more or less right behind this i'm trying to get just more or less lined up but that won't be perfect enough for a docking, so I, I keep adjusting side on to see how it is. Also, it looks like I'm slightly off in the rotation, so I should probably correct that at some point. You have to be very closely aligned, um, and we'll, we'll see a, our, an issue with that rate later. So, yeah, it's a case of just jockeying the camera around left and right to, to get a good angle and uh, trying to keep your lateral motion uh, exactly, or to try to stop, minimize your lateral motion. Now, of course, you can use the artificial horizon as well to see when you're moving towards the object and the, there's no lateral motion, but that doesn't mean you're aligned. So you have to be aligned and have your the two um, motion vectors or the two um, markers on the, on the nav ball. Those have to be aligned and you have to be visually aligned. I don't think there's any uh, tool in the game that lets you check that your docking ports are aligned but that's uh you know we'll no doubt see that i can't wait for the camera mod to be working on this it'll probably make things a whole lot easier uh, i expect that someone will have a docking tool as well and as we get really close what will happen yeah, yeah what will happen is the magnetic force will take over and we will get pulled together and there we go so we're now kind of sitting there we're not mating, and the reason is that we are not perfectly aligned. So a trick here is to turn off your ASAS system, and then you magically flip into position, and you are now docked. Now the two ships are mated in space, the astronauts can go and see each other, fuel can be transferred, and they can sit around telling stories of the, their war efforts and comparing scars and corbettes and whatever. Well, I hope you found this helpful. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.